Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. Today's story deals with a mythical kingdom in Middle Europe. It is a tale of intrigue, adventure, romance, all the elements that were so much valued by the Victorians. You will meet a gallant, titled Englishman, a beautiful princess, a loyal retainer, and several black-hearted villains, all playing their parts in a place that never was and in a time that is now gone but which we all look back on with nostalgic longing. In so? Who? Uh, is that you, Rassendil? Yes, and I have a sword. So I see. I hope you know how to use it. I got... <laughs> yes, I see you can use it. Where did you learn? In the Lancers. The Duke thought he was a swordsman too, but he's dead now. And in a few moments, you will be too. Our mystery drama, The Prisoner of Zender, was adapted from the classic by Anthony Hope, especially for the Mystery Theater by Robert Newman, and stars Howard Ross. It is sponsored in part by x lax and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Our story begins in a railway station in Paris. Rudolf Rassendil, a young, titled Englishman, has just discovered that there is no dining car on the train and is buying some sandwiches and a bottle of wine at the buffet. As the man at the counter fumbles for the change, Rassendil hears a shrill whistle and the cry, En voiture! With the wine and sandwiches under his arm, he runs out to the platform. The train is moving. Dodging a guard, he jumps on the step of a first-class carriage, pulls open the door, and enters a compartment where an attractive woman in her late twenties frowns at him in annoyance. You cannot come in here, monsieur. It is reserved. I know it is, mademoiselle, and I apologize. But it was either that or miss the train. And since my luggage is on it... Is anything wrong? Wrong? Besides my intrusion, I mean, because you're staring at me, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. It is just that you took me by surprise. Uh, who are you? My name is Rudolf Rasendil. You are English? Yes, I am. And you, you are Mademoiselle Antoinette de Maubin. How do you know that? Because you were pointed out to me at the ballet in London a week or so ago. But you're still staring at me, and I wish you'd tell me why. It is just that you look very much like someone else. So much, in fact, that for a moment I... You thought I was he. And who is that? It does not matter. May I ask where you are going? Of course. I'm going to Ruritania. Ruritania? Yes, to Strelsau for the coronation of my namesake, the new king. Oh, no, you cannot do that. I beg your pardon. I mean, I... I think it would be a great mistake, and I urge you not to go there. But why? Because, because it might be very dangerous. The political situation is very uncertain. Yes, I've heard that. But I don't see how that would affect me. And since, though, we've never met, the king happens to be a distant relation of mine. A relation? Yes. And so while I thank you for your warning, I'm determined to go. And now, if you'll excuse me, I'll go back to my own compartment. 
The next morning, we crossed the border into Ruritania. And in the afternoon, I got off the train at Zender, about 20 miles from Strelsau. I had heard that it was impossible to get hotel accommodations in Strelsau. So I took a room at the inn and then, wanting some exercise after the long train trip, I went for a walk in the surrounding forest. I had only gone a short way when I came on a heavy-set, gray-haired man in hunting costume. He was carrying a gun, and his back was toward me. When he heard me, he turned and... Uh, excuse me, Your Majesty. I, I thought of... But you're not His Majesty. No, I certainly am not. Who are you talking to, Fritz? I don't know, but I think we should find out. What do you mean? I... <gasps> well, no, it, it can't be. Yes, Your Majesty. If it were not for his clothes, I would swear it was you or, or your twin. Well, I can see that you're as surprised as I am, sir. Yes, I am. I had heard rumors that there was a resemblance. Well, then you know who I am. If I'm not mistaken, you are King Rudolf of Ruritania. Or will be when you are crowned tomorrow. That is correct. And may I ask who you are? Rudolf Rosendil. Rosendil? Then we're related. Yes, we are. I've never been certain as to exactly what degree. Oh, but I'm forgetting my manners. My aide, Colonel Sapt, my English cousin. Um, I'm very happy to meet you, Mr. Rezendil. And I to meet you, Colonel. But tell me what you're doing here, cousin. Since we are related and since the coronation of a relative does not take place every day, I came here to attend yours. Well, you mean you're going to Strelsau tomorrow? <laughs> I want a photograph of my brother Michael's face when he sees us together. Impossible, sire. Well, why impossible? Mr. Rasendil must not go to Strelzow. But why? The situation is confused enough and difficult enough as it is. I suppose it might create problems. Which the Duke Michael would take advantage of. If it will create problems, I will not go. Well, if they would not be your problems, they would be mine. Oh, by the way, oh, what first name did they give you? Your name, sire. Rudolph. <laughs> I'm flattered. Well, cousin Rudolph, there is no need to decide about tomorrow today. <laughs> I'm very pleased to meet you. Very anxious to know you better. Will you dine with me tonight? If you have no other plans. I have no other plans. There will just be you, Colonel Sapt, and my other aide. Franz von Tallenheim and myself. And since we are staying at a hunting lodge that my brother Michael and me, it will all be very simple. Then I will be delighted. Well, go on, Cousin Rudolph. Tell me more. There's not much more to tell. As I said, I have one brother, an older one. No, I have one, too. A younger half-brother, the Duke Michael. <laughs> Black Michael, he is called... Tell me, do you like your brother? Very much. Well, I do not like mine. And, of course, he hates me. Why, of course. Well, because he would like to be king. For which I do not blame him. Tell me, are you a swordsman? After a fashion. <laughs> I know your English reticence. I'll wager you're a good one. Ah, there you are, Franz. Where have you been? At the door. The Duke Michael sent over one of his guards with this. Oh, it looks like a bottle from his own cellar. Any message? Just that it was a special vintage that he had hoped you would drink his health in it. Well, that I certainly do. Uh, away with the other bottle, Fritz, and open this one. No, 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 sire, I beg you. No, would you have me insult my brother? Open it, I say. <laughs> Yes, sire. And pour some for my cousin, Fritz. Uh, no, sire, I have had enough. And since it is getting late and you must be up early, I think I should go. No, you cannot go. I insist that you stay here tonight. But I... I, I, uh, I would appreciate it very much if you would stay, Mr. Rosendale. You seem to have even more influence with him than I. And after all this wine, he is going to be very difficult tomorrow. Very well. If you think I can be of help, I will stay. Mr. Rosendale, Mr. Rosendale, wake up, wake up, wake up. What? Oh, it's you, Colonel. What time is it? It's five o'clock. Five? Is anything wrong? Very wrong. 
come into the king's room with me. All right. We're not able to wake him up. The colonel and I have been trying for almost half an hour now. We think he has been drugged. He certainly looks that way. His breathing is very odd, but who could have done it? Oh, that's easy. His dear brother Michael. He must have put something in that bottle of wine he sent him. None of the rest of us drank any of it. No, but why would he do that? It's just as easy and obvious. So his majesty would not be able to go to Strelsau for the coronation. It'll be hours before the drug wears off. Then I suppose you will have to postpone the coronation. It cannot be postponed. If he is not crowned today, he will never be crowned. Why not? It is critical. The whole nation is waiting for him to take the throne. If he does not appear, his brother, the Duke Michael, will seize power and be crowned in his place. But he can't do that. He can and will. Michael is even more popular than the king. And he has a good part of the army with him. They would support him. Why do you think he gave him the drugged wine? Precisely because it would give him a chance to take the throne. But we can't let that happen. Is there nothing that can be done about it? Yes. Yes, there is. France and I have been talking about it. You can save him and his crown by going to Strelsau in his place. You mean impersonate him at the coronation? Yes. That's impossible. It's not impossible at all. You look enough like him to be his twin. But looks are not enough. Anyone who... Talk to me would be bound to know. The only people you would have to talk to are the Princess Flavia, and she has not seen him in weeks, and the Duke Michael. Well, what about the Duke Michael? That is exactly what makes it possible. Even if he guessed, and I don't think he would, he would not dare say anything about it, because if he did, he would be exposing himself and his plot. I see what you mean. You and I will ride to the station and take the train to Schlosser, leaving the king here with France. After the coronation, tonight, we will ride back here. The king will have recovered by then. He and I will return to Schlosser, and you will leave the country quietly and secretly. I suppose it might work. It will, it will, if you agree to help us. Now, will you... Well, he is a relative, and, and I like him. And above all, what the Duke Michael is trying to do is not only wrong, but unspeakable. Yes, I'll do it. And so, to save the crown for his cousin, Rassendil agrees to impersonate him for just this one day. But will it be for just this one day? Will the Duke Michael give up his plan so easily? Isn't it possible that there is more danger involved than either Rassendil or the Colonel realize? We'll find out when I return with Act Two in just a few minutes. Now back to our story to Rudolf Rassendil, who came from England to Ruritania to be present at the coronation of his distant cousin, and who will now be there, not as a spectator, but as a principal, impersonating the king himself at the ceremony. It all went much better than we had any right to hope. The royal train was waiting at the Zender station, and while it was taking us to Strelsau, the colonel went over everything he thought I should know. When we arrived at the capital, we were met by the king's guard. A magnificent horse was brought up. I mounted it and, with the colonel close beside me, began the procession to the cathedral. As we rode through the crowded streets, there was a shout of, God save the king. And the colonel murmured, God save both of them. I should have been nervous, and I suppose I was. But I was also strangely excited. For who has not dreamed of riding through the streets of a city while the crowd cheered? Then we were at the cathedral. I dismounted, went in, and walked up to the nave as the organ pealed. The cathedral was even more crowded than the streets. 
but only two faces stood out, both in front of the altar. One was that of the beautiful young woman, the Princess Flavia, who stood at one side of the cardinal. The other that of the dark-haired man who stood on the other side and stared at me as if he saw a ghost, the Duke Michael. I remember little of what followed. I knelt and the cardinal anointed me. Then I rose, was given the crown, and put it on my head. It was over, and I was walking back out of the cathedral with the Princess Flavia beside me. The royal carriage was waiting, and we got into it, just the two of us, for the ride to the palace. So you are now the king. So it seems. Somehow you, you seem different today. In what way? But you not only look different, a bit thinner, more sober and serious, but your whole manner is different. Would it please you if I did begin to take my responsibilities seriously? You know my views. Yes, I do. They have become very important to me. From now on, I shall do everything I can to please you. Change is beginning to overwhelm me. Has my arrival at the cathedral seemed to overwhelm Michael? Poor Michael. I'm afraid I didn't particularly enjoy the ceremony. Rudolph, be careful. You've always been too casual about Michael. Trusted him too much. I will not do so in the future. For it's quite clear to me now that he wants what I have. And perhaps something which I don't have yet, but hope to win someday. arrived at the palace and there was a reception which was as much of a blur as the coronation, except for the moment when the Duke Michael came up to me and... Congratulations, Rudolph. I must say you performed very well today. Thank you, Michael. But why should that have surprised you? Well, you have not always done so. Oh, by the way, what did you think of the wine I sent you last night? I must confess that I did not drink it. I felt I should have a clear head today. Ah, that would account for it. For what, Michael? Oh, it doesn't matter. Perhaps you will try it uh, another time. When the reception was over, the colonel conducted me to the king's quarters. As soon as we were alone, he embraced me. Oh, Razzledil, you were magnificent. <sighs> now, now, Colonel Sapt. Well, you were... The king himself could not have done better. I'm glad you thought it went well. But there are some things I wish I had been better prepared for. Mm, such as? Why didn't you tell me how beautiful the Princess Flavia was? I assumed you knew. Just how does she and the king feel about one another? Well, they've known one another since they were children. She is better loved than anyone in the kingdom. And everyone... Everyone except the Duke Michael, that is, hopes that they will marry. We had dinner alone in the king's quarters, and at midnight we slipped out of the palace and rode back to Zenda. My feelings were mixed when we arrived at the hunting lodge. My masquerade would be over now, and I confess that in some ways I regretted it. Hans! Your Majesty, uh, France, where are you? It's not possible that he hasn't recovered yet, is it? Uh, I don't know. Let's look in his room. Good Lord, look! It, it's not the king, is it? No, 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 it, it's France. Dead? <laughs> yes, yes. And the king? Gone. Michael must have sent some of his men here to get him. France tried to protect him, and they killed him and took the king. Where? Oh, Michael has a castle here in Zender. Possibly there. You don't think they've killed him too, do you? No, no. Michael must know that something is wrong now. You were in Schroeser when the king was captured here. He may even know who you are. He could know. We must rescue the king. How can we when we're not sure where he is? But if we delay, Michael may kill him. If he does, you, who are crowned today, will continue as king. Do you think Michael wants that? No. 
He sends it side. He cannot kill the king or announce that you are an imposter, because if he did, he would be exposing his plot. On the other hand, we cannot call in the army to rescue the king, for then they would know that it was you who was crowned today and not the king. Are you saying that there is nothing we can do? At the moment, no. We must return to Schrelzau. And you must continue playing the king until we decide how we can save him. It was almost five in the morning when we got back to the capital, and we were both exhausted. I went to bed, and when I awoke, it was afternoon, and the colonel was standing next to my bed. A, a letter for you brought by a messenger. It's from Antoinette de Maubin. What does she say? That she has something of great importance to tell me and asked me to meet her alone at ten tonight in the summer house on the far side of the palace grounds. It's a trap. The Duke Michael must have gotten her to write it. Perhaps. Perhaps not. She says at the end, ask Colonel Sapt who had the most interest in seeing that the Duke Michael does not become king. Yeah, there is something in that. She loves Michael, there's no doubt about that. And if he did become king, he would not marry her. He would marry the Princess Flavia. So she does have an interest in helping us. I think I should go. Mm, it could be dangerous. It could. But the king's life is at stake. And so I will go. <laughs> Nine o'clock, wearing the king's dress uniform, I was in the grand ballroom. And when the Princess Flavia arrived, I went to greet her. Good evening, Your Majesty. Good evening, Flavia. I've been waiting for you. Will you dance? If it would please you. Oh, it would very much. even more beautiful tonight than you did yesterday at the coronation. Oh, thank you, Your Majesty. Must you call me that? It's your title. It's not what you called me in the past. It was not your title then. But I would prefer it if you called me what you did. Very well. Rudolph, you really are changed, aren't you? From what I was yesterday? No, but in other ways. You not only dance better than you did, but you seem to be enjoying it. I never enjoyed it more in my life. There is only one thing I would enjoy more. No, there are several things. But I will begin with the simplest. Which is? To be alone with you. Have a chance to talk to you. Uh, forgive me, Your Majesty. May I have a word with you? Oh, yes, Colonel. Will you excuse me, Flavia? Of course. Well, Fritz, it's, uh, it's almost ten. If you're determined to go to the summer house, we had better go. Oh, not we. The letter said I was to go alone. I don't like it, Rossendale. Two of Michael's men, Rupert Hensow and Detchard, have been watching you ever since they arrived. Still, we must chance it. Tell me how to get there. I will come part of the way with you. Point out the path and wait. Five minutes later, I was in front of the summer house. The door was closed. And when I opened it... Monsieur Rosendale. Yes. Monsieur Rosendale, you are in great danger. It was that Duke Michael who made me write that letter. I thought as much. In ten minutes or so, two of his men will be here to kill you. You must be gone before then. They intend to kill me here. Yes. Then Michael will declare a state of emergency and seize power. At the same time, he will send word to his castle at Zenda, and the king will be killed and his body disposed of. That is what I came to find out. The king is at Michael's castle in Zenda. Yes. Where? In one of the dungeons to the right of the main gate. I do not know how you can rescue him, but if there is a way I can help you to, I will. I... Listen. Listen. What is that? Oh, they are coming. Coming before they were supposed to. It doesn't matter. You've told me what I wanted to know. But they will kill you. 
I'm sure they'll try, but is there a bolt on the door? Yes, I see there is. Mr. Rassendale? Uh, yes, Sensa. Ah, so you know my name. Mr. Rassendale, I have come to make you an offer. And uh, what is that? Your presence here has made serious problems for someone. Uh, the uh, Duke Michael? Well, yes. If you leave the country immediately, he will pay you 50,000 pounds. That's quite a generous offer. Do not believe them. Look, they have drawn their swords. If you go out, they will kill you. Oh, perhaps. Perhaps not. Ah, this iron tea table will do. Do? As a shield. When I give you the word, open the door. Very well, gentlemen. Relying on your honor, I'm coming out. Now, mademoiselle. What's in it? Look out! Look out. <laughs> Holding the table in front of me, I hit them like a battering ram. They both went down, and I ran like a deer back through the grounds toward the palace. Hasn't he? Uh, are you all right? <laughs> yes, Fritz. But why are you laughing? Wasn't it a trap then? No, it was. But it didn't spring properly. And now there are two very battered gentlemen outside the summer house. Oh, I knew it. I knew I shouldn't let you go. Well, on the contrary. Now I know what we wanted to know. And tomorrow we return to Zenda. The, the king is there? Yes. And I have a plan. I won't go into it now because there is something I want you to do. Mm. Will you ask the princess to join me here on the terrace? Why? Let us say, to say farewell. If we are successful at Zenda, I will not see her again. And if we fail, I shall not see her again either. You mean you'll be killed? It's a possibility. Yeah, well, very well, Rasendira. I'll get her. <laughs> Rudolph, the colonel said you wished to see me. Not just to see you, Flavia, but to talk to you. Or rather, to tell you something. And what is that? Something I'm sure you know. That I love you. I think I have loved you all my life without knowing it. What a strange thing to say. Still, I... I know what you mean. We've known one another ever since we were children. And have always been very fond of you. But... During this last day or so, ever since the coronation. Yes. I love you too. My dearest. Oh, Rudolph. My dear Rudolph. Oh, I almost wish that you were not the king. What? Why do you say that? So that I could prove that it is you yourself I love. And nothing else. Oh, my darling, there's nothing you could have said that could have made me happier. I will treasure it all my life. And when I come back, I... Dad, you're going away? Yes. Tomorrow, to Zenda. To do what? Let us say, to do some more hunting. No, you wouldn't go away now just to hunt. It, it has something to do with Michael, hasn't it? Perhaps. Oh, Rudolph. I'm afraid. It sounds dangerous. There is some risk. But it is a risk that must be taken if the throne is to be secure. For the house of Elfberg. And for you. And so Rudolph says farewell to the woman he has come to love. And who claims that she would love him even if he were not the king. But is it a final farewell, or will he see her again? And what will happen to the king, a prisoner of Zenda? We'll find out when we return shortly with Act Three. Now back to our story, to the hunting lodge at Zenda. It's about 11 o'clock the next night. And Rassendil, wearing dark trousers and a dark jersey, and with a sword thrust through his belt, is about to leave on his dangerous mission. When I came back from the summer house, I told the colonel I had a plan. Antoinette had given me some of it, and fortune had supplied the rest. 
That morning, shortly after we arrived at the lodge, we learned that the Duke Michael, Antoinette, Hensow, and Deshide were now at the castle of Zender. There was one servant there who was loyal to the king rather than to Michael. I sent a message to Antoinette through him, asking her to do something. And I told her precisely what that would create a diversion at about 11 o'clock. And, if I was lucky, allow me to rescue the king. At 10.30, we left the lodge. I, the colonel, and half a dozen trusty, well-armed men, and rode to the castle. We stopped in some trees near the moat, and... I still don't know why you're doing this, Rattendil. Oh, yes, you do. The king is my cousin. And besides, I like him. But risking your life this way... It's our only chance. Your spy at the castle told us that the king always has a guard with him who has orders to kill him if there's an attempt at a rescue. This is the only way we can save him. But break in quickly after you hear Antoinette cry out. As quickly as I can. I shook his hand, slipped into the moat and swam across to the castle while he and our men went around to the guardhouse on the landward side. Climbing out of the moat, I drew my sword and waited just outside the main gate where I could see the door that led to the king's dungeon. A short while later, the door opened, and my two friends from the summer house, Hensau and Deshard, came out. Where are you going now, Hensau? Where do you think? To bed. Be careful. The Duke is angry the way things have been going. You be careful. Watch our friend in there. I'll see you in the morning. Deshard went back inside, and Hansau walked into the courtyard, looked up at a lighted window that I knew was Antoinette's, and began climbing up to it. I gasped. My plan had been for Antoinette to attract the attention of Michael and the other guards by crying out that Hansau was trying to break into her room, and here he was doing exactly that. He reached the balcony outside her window and... Who is that? Hansau! No! Michael! that led to the dungeon opened and Deshart came out. He glanced up at the lighted window, then saw me. You! I cut at him, but he dodged and ran back inside and down the steps to the dungeon. By the time I had followed, he had the dungeon door open and sword in hand was standing in front of the king who was tied to a chair. Come a step nearer and he dies. Cousin, is that you? Yes. You mean you'd kill a helpless man? Why not? You'd have to kill me first. A good idea. You first, then him. Cousin, cousin, be careful. He's a very good sword. Yes, he is, but not good enough. Before, before I go, this is for you, Elberg. No, you devil. Are you badly hurt, cousin? Uh, I don't know. He caught me here in the chest. Let me cut you loose. Can you walk? Yes, yes, I think I... Can, but we'll never get away. There are others. They're busy. And Colonel Sapp should be breaking in at any minute. Come on. Up the stairs. I'll help you. All right, cousin. I'll try. We went up the stairs. I pulled the lever that controlled the drawbridge, and it came rumbling down. On the other side of the moat, I, I could hear that Sapp and our men breaking down the door of the guardhouse. They... Ah! Michael, who killed him? Rupert Hensow. He broke into her room. Michael went in to protect her and... Here he comes. Hensow. Oh. Is that you, Rassendil? No iron table tonight? No iron table. But I have a sword. So I see. I hope you know how to use it. Anka! Oh, yes. I see. You can use it. Where did you learn? In the Lancer. I thought so. Rosendil, Rosendil, where are you? Here, on the drawbridge. Is that the colonel? Yes. Drop your sword and surrender, Hensow. And be hanged for murder? Never. Goodbye, Rosendil. <laughs> Who oh, 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 was that? Rupert Hensow. Huh? He killed Duke Michael and did not want to be taken. But let him go. 
We have something more important to worry about. Well, well, your, your majesty, but but you're wounded. Uh, yes, Fritz, I, I think not too badly, but... Catch oh. him, Fritz. Oh, yes, I have him. I... Oh, he's fainted. We must get him back to the lodge. We sent one of our men for a doctor. Took Michael's coach to carry the king to the hunting lodge. He was still unconscious, and the colonel and I rode with him. When we arrived at the lodge, there were lights on in all the rooms. There's someone here. Who can it be? I don't know. I'll go see. But, darling, is that you? Flavia, what are you doing here? What, did you think I would remain in Strelsau when you were here and in danger? You, you shouldn't have come. Perhaps, but I am here. Oh, Rudolf, you're hurt. Your face, your arm. Well, they're nothing. Scratches. But they must be attended to. Oh, who are they carrying in here? A friend. More than a friend. A relative of mine who was hurt much more seriously than I. But, but he looks like... Yes. Very much like me. My darling, it's late. If you go to your room now, I promise I will explain everything in the morning. I won't go until you tell me where you were and how you were hurt. Very well. I was at Michael's castle rescuing the man the colonel and the others just brought in here. Rescuing him? Michael was keeping him prisoner. But that and all danger from Michael is over now. He's dead. Dead? How did he die? One of his men, Rupert Hensow, killed him. It was he who wounded me. Something very strange is going on. Well, forgive me, Your Majesty, our... Our friend has been taken care of, temporarily at least. Now he should take care of you. What? Oh, yes. Have you called a doctor? Yes, yes, Your Highness. He will be here soon. But in the meantime, His Majesty should rest. He has been through a great deal. You're right. He looks exhausted. Very well, my darling. I'll wait for an explanation. But why am I so afraid certain that nothing will ever be the same again. The colonel looked at me sympathetically as we left the room. He thought he knew what I was going through, but he didn't. He couldn't. Giving up my role as king was not difficult, but giving up Flavia was something else. And still, what choice did I have? Sick at heart, I went up to one of the bedrooms and stretched out on the bed. I thought I might sleep, but I, I did not. I was still lying there when the colonel came in early the next morning. The king wanted to see me, he said. Silently, I went with him. Got in. How are you? Well, the wound is not too serious. The doctor tells me I will be well in a few days. I'm glad. Yes. Yes, I think you are. I don't think I would be in your place. In fact, I'm not sure it would not have been better if I had died. For I think that you would have made a better king than I. Don't say that. Oh, why not, when it's true? I will go now. My work here is done. Yes, and done as no one but you could have done it. You have shown me how to play the king. And I will act as you would have acted for as long as I live. You praise me too much, cousin. It was only by the narrowest margin that I was not as great a traitor as your brother Michael. What do you mean? Ah. Uh, ah, yes. Flavio, you have fallen in love with her. Yes. Well, what will you do? Until this moment, I was not sure. I thought perhaps I would just leave, slip away. But now I know I cannot. I must tell her the truth. Yes, yes, I suppose you must. Cousin, I will not try to thank you. How could I after all that you've done? But I will never forget you. We shook hands and I left the room. The colonel was waiting. When I asked him where Flavia was, he told me. And I went into the living room. I guessed last night when they brought the king in. And this morning I made the colonel tell me everything. What will you do now? I'm leaving. Going back to England. I thought so. I did not unpack my bag, so I'm ready. Ready? You mean, you intend to come with me? Of course. 
You're mad. You can't do that. There's only one reason why I could not. And that is, if you were not just playing the part of the king, but pretending when you told me how you felt about me. Do you... Can you believe that? Don't you know how I feel about you? Did from the moment I saw you in the cathedral? I love you, Flavia. I will love you till the day I die. But what you're suggesting cannot be. Why? Are you not as good a man as the king? Better, in fact? Oh, I love you. I love you with all my heart. And if I can be with you... I will be content in the meanest cottage. And is love all? What else is there? There is duty and honor. If love were all, I might have let the king die in Michael's dungeon. Then I would have had both you and the throne. But I could not. And if honor binds me, then should it not bind you, who are a princess, even more? Must you not be true to your country, the house of Elfberg? No. I say yes. There are some whom I choose differently, but not you. So, you have not only taught the king how to play the king, but you must also teach me how to play the princess. And no doubt one day the queen. I have only told you things you already know. Yes. I tried to ignore them, but I knew them. Everything you said. Then you will let me go and you will stay. Yes. I knew it. Knew you would do what you must. But I had better go quickly then. No. Not yet. Oh, oh, Rudolph, my darling. Take me in your arms once more. Flavia, my dearest. You. You will always be my king. And you, my queen and only love. And now farewell. Oh, Rudolph. It's, uh, it's over. Yes. What arrangements have you made? I have a carriage waiting. I will take you to the border myself. Put you on the train to Paris. Very well. I have learned something. What is that? I said you were the finest Elberg of them all. And it's true. What I have learned is that heaven does not always choose the best man to be king. And so, with the colonel's arm around him, Rudolf Rassendil leaves the hunting lodge, the king whose life and throne he saved, and the woman he loves. The impersonation and the great adventure are over. I'll be back shortly. The Prisoner of Zenda is a story about a place that never was, but one that fulfilled the dreams of many. For as Rassendil himself said, who has not dreamed of playing the king? and playing him more royally than any king could. Who has not wished to do daring and heroic things, love a princess, and in the end, be strong enough to give up all for honor? You would not have done it? To tell the truth, I doubt if I would either. But then, we are none of us Victorians. Our cast included Howard Ross, Evie Juster, Lloyd Batista, Leon Janney, and Dan Ocko. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by ARM, Allergy Relief Medicine. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.